Hello team, this is the making of the lighthouse object in Paint 3D. Now Paint 3D is a free application on Windows 10. If you've updated in the past three years, you should have it. I'm running this app on a Surface Go, uh, which is a fabulous little uh, uh, laptop that I almost daily use. Now, Saturday the... Oh, let me just think, that's Friday the 7th of August was Lighthouse Day, and that was what gave me the idea of making this. I've loved lighthouses as objects for years upon years. They're just such a brilliantly visual, beautiful object, especially the red and white coloration. So I decided to make a lighthouse. Um, I was in between different objects. I was making something else as part of Twitch's, well, as part of my uh, month on Twitch, creating a smorgast dragon object. I just wanted a bit of a brief break so I decided to make a uh, lighthouse. Now, what I've done so far is used primitive objects, the sphere and the cone. And I'm just duplicating them, moving them up and down, and resizing them so I've got the top cone of the lighthouse. Now, Paint 3D is fabulous for an awful lot of things. One area that I do wish it would update itself a little would be in the alignment of objects. So what I have to do to make sure all the objects aligned correctly is make all of the objects as if I'm facing them and then select all, control A on the keyboard or there's a select all icon on the right hand side when you're in 3D edit mode or 3D object edit mode and then I press shift on the keyboard and rotate everything 90 degrees to the left, to the right, up or down, and that helps me with alignment. Now at the moment what I'm doing is making a cage of tubes around where the glass or the light bulb of the lighthouse is going to be. I am, I've made one, copied and pasted it from the right to the left hand side, selected both, copied and pasted them and rotated them 90 degrees, selected all of the tubes again, rotated them 45 degrees and what that does it gives me loads of tubes all in a cage pattern around the the cone underneath the cone of the lighthouse and then lastly i've made an object that i'm going to put into the middle of it and i was i was working through this quickly so i wasn't thinking about a light bulb i could have made a light bulb but in the end i just thought i'd use a, a straight tube I think if I did this again, if I did this as a proper tutorial, because none of this was aimed to be a tutorial, I was just having fun with it, I would either create a light bulb or import a light bulb. Now what you can see at the moment is I'm selecting the tubes, changing the colour so I can see them more clearly about around the background and moving them so that they are more aligned to the cone that is now above them. I've rotated everything. 90 degrees so I'm looking from the bottom up of the object and to change colour it's as simple as selecting the object clicking on edit colour changing the colour and the reason why I did this another reason why I did this is that I could rescale it and have another cage of tubes around the actual bulb the yellow tube itself Now what I've done is I've copied the cone, I've selected the cone, I've copied it and I've inverted it in terms of scale. I've dragged the little middle white box on the scale box and dragged it downwards. And then I know I've got the beginnings of the base of the lighthouse and they're made from the same cone so they're, set, they're aligned in the same way. They will be 
above and below on the same plane. It would be, um, if I rotated it, it would all look like it met in the middle. Now with all 3D applications, Blender and 3ds Max and SculptGL and Maya, and Lightwave and whatever, understanding the concept of 3D space is the hardest. Now Paint 3D does it in a slightly dissimilar way. Most applications give you a top, a left, a front and a perspective view. So you can be looking at your object from different angles at the same time. Paint doesn't do that. Paint gives you one angle and you can rotate objects as much as you want, or you can click on the 3D view icon or text, which is at the top of the screen, just right of the middle. If you click on that, you can see a 3D view. You can rotate it with the right click of your mouse or three fingers on a touch screen and rotate the screen around. And that's great, it's useful. You can see your object from different angles I tend never to make anything in the 3D view because you don't exactly know where it's going to align to or which angle it's going to be made at. And it's not impossible, I, it's my personal choice in that respect. Now all I'm doing at the moment is resizing and moving the objects Occasionally I'm pressing shift on the keyboard when I move them so they move only in one plane, horizontal or vertical, depending on which I choose. But this is, there's no, um, there's nothing different about what I'm doing at the moment. All I'm doing is resizing objects to taste. I'm just seeing where I like these objects to be. Now at this point I've hidden the background. You can do that by pressing canvas which is at the top of the, the Paint 3D window. It's one of the darker grey icons to the right hand side. Click on that and click on show canvas. It will be highlighted blue to say it's on and I turned it off. Or you can press Control, Shift and W on the keyboard. Now more or less at this point I decided I wasn't going to give this, uh, I was wondering about a cliff to put the lighthouse on but I thought that would actually not be too much work but I only wanted this to be a simple object that I made quite quickly. So instead I decided it was going to be a space lighthouse partially inspired by the fabulous gorillas video as well. So I used, I went to 3D tools, 3D objects I clicked on the 3D Doodle tool, the middle one. You get three at the top above primitives. One is a tube, a sausage brush. One is a soft edge doodle. So you make something that is almost like a cushion. And one is a hard edged doodle. And I drew a simple rock face. I copied it a couple of times, I think. I made one of the copies green for grass, one of the copies gray for rock. I just moved the two so they're intersecting. One was just showing up through the top of the other. That's how I got the grass effect in, in polygons rather than in texture. And again, I'm just rota rotating everything 90 degrees to the left, 90 degrees to the right. I press shift when I'm doing this in order to make sure that I'm snapping to those points. Whenever I rotate, I don't do it by eye, I don't do it by any number possible. I always do it by the increments, 15, 30, 45, 90. So I always know that I'm looking at the exact side, the exact front, the exact top and similar. And now I'm just clicking on objects, selecting them. When I select them on the right hand side, it gives me a tab which says edit color. I can change the color of the objects. If I select multiple objects, more than one, which I'm doing at the moment, I can select multiple objects, click on edit color and change color of all of them together. And as you can see now, I'm using the three finger uh, tool, a uh, three finger touch on the screen to rotate the 3D view.
Now, the reason why I can move the red of the lighthouse as opposed to the white, which is what I'm doing at the moment, is because there are two cones there, and one I've coloured red, one I've coloured white. The overlap allows me to change where the, the line, where the red and the white meet. Uh, and it's just a great way to, to colour an object simply. Primitive, change your colour, move it around. So now I've got a white, a red and a white stripe on my lighthouse. And that's only because I've got two or three cones that I'm just moving the centre point or the scale of. Now this isn't a proper tutorial, I'm sorry about that. Uh, I, I didn't intend it to be a proper tutorial, I was just having fun. But it struck me that this is a very simple object to make. So I thought, you know, why not finish it off, why not narrate it? Now ironically I'm using a, a host of Microsoft applications in the same go. I'm using Voice Recorder uh, to record the narration. I record, uh, I'm editing it in the updated version of Microsoft Movie Maker which is the videos app in the photos app. Yes, I know, but you know, hey, what can you do? Uh, and obviously I made this all in Paint 3D. The only thing that I've used to create all of this that isn't Microsoft is OBS, which is the shareware free um, open broadcast system where you can record this video, which is what I've done. Now, um, that's brilliant. The barrier for entry for people making videos is very, very low. It's, it's fantastic. Um, now, to go back to the model for a second, I'm using the 2D paint tools to paint directly on the 3D objects, and I'm painting a window. Now, what I'm doing is I'm painting the outside shape with a marker pen, and then I'm using a marker pen of the same color uh, of the same color as the background to just tidy up the edges. I could use, at this point, the eraser as well to tidy up the edges. That would take me back to the underlying colour of the um, background, which is white. Uh, again, personal choice is what I choose to do. I am using a, a marker with a lower opacity to paint the shadow underneath the windowsill. I'm going to use that in slightly more uh, um, purposefully now on the door. I'm using a green marker pen, low opacity, to do the shading on the door. So it's a little bit like painting with watercolour, where you've added more water to the paint. The paint becomes much uh, thinner and a tint rather than a colour. Now it's only a quick object and that was only a quick element. I would probably add more detail to that, add a, a wood grain sticker or something like that to make the door nicer. But actually, to be honest, it's such a small area of the screen. Again, it's one of the things that, because I'm a teacher, it's one of the things that I say to my students, what is the bit you need to focus on? And the door for at this point wasn't for me. If I was zooming in on it in an animation, then yes, it would be more important and I would add more detail to it. However, I, I don't know that I set myself this time scale, but I knew I wanted to make this as a quick object. The entirety of this object, this video is in real time, the entirety of this object was made in 30 minutes. Now there are two objects here, uh, the two drawn polygonal soft edge doodle tools, the grass and the rock, I just moved them over each other so that the rock showed up through a lot of the grass. I'm just using the pen to elaborate on the grass, to, to soften it out so it becomes less of a polygonal line, a line between the two, and now it becomes more of a softening that you would get with grass. This is tinting outwards. I'm using the watercolour brush on a low opacity just so I can ghost some of the grass in there and add a couple of grass highlights as well. Again, I could have used a sticker uh, to do that, but um, 
this is a, a fast object. If I spent more time on it, I would spend more time texturing it. I have used a sticker here, uh, which is a rock sticker. And I've stuck it again at a low opacity on the underneath of the floating meteorite lighthouse. That's a quick and simple way to color and tint the whole of an object that is facing you. Unfortunately, a sticker only does the side that's facing you and blends outwards, which is useful in ways. It would be lovely to be able to put a sticker over the whole of an object in a uniform fashion. But at the moment, what you have to do is put a sticker on, rotate it, put a sticker on, rotate it. Now, when you apply a sticker, there are two icons on either side of the sticker. One is a tick, and if you click on that, it just stamps the sticker down and takes you out of sticker mode. The other one is a stamp, and if you click on that, it stamps the sticker, moves it a little bit down to the right, then you can move your object, stamp again, move your object, stamp again, move your object, stamp again, and that is what allows me to do that across. Now I'm using three fingers to move and rotate the object in 3D view. I'm using two fingers, pinch to zoom in and zoom out, or two fingers up, down and across to rotate and to move, uh, uh, to, to scale in and to move the object in screen. So I'm using the touch interface of a surface to rotate and record and to move around. Now finally I've decided that if I'm going to have a space lighthouse, what this really needs is a UFO. Unfortunately a UFO is a really beautifully simple object to make. So I've used a sphere to create the, like the bulb of the UFO. And I seem to have stopped for a minute. Maybe I was getting up pouring a new coffee or something like that, I don't know. <laughs> But once I've made the sphere, I copied and pasted the sphere and used the control key to rescale it in and out and the shift key to scale it, um, hang on, uh, zooming in and out. So I've used the control and the shift key to move and scale it uh, to constraints and that allows me to keep the alignment of the sphere and to also enlarge it and squash it down. Now I'm making a cone and again I've got to play with the alignment of it a little bit so I'm going to I probably did rotate it by 90 degrees a couple of times. Uh, in this case I aligned it using the 3D view tool and if you make an object on the left hand side is a depth slider icon. It's the one that's got the two boxes a, a perspective if you click and drag on that, you can move it forwards and backwards in scene. That's actually a dead useful tool. I tend to align by rotation, but the 3D uh, align tool or the 3D in scene tool uh, icon is really useful. I'm just changing the colors of the objects. The cone, I copied and pasted and then uh, clicked in the top middle white box and dragged it all the way down so I've got these two cones that meet in the middle to make the UFO body shape and now I'm just rotating to make sure the alignment is correct. Now I'm going to select both of the cones in a second at the moment I'm just duplicating the bulb underneath the UFO as well. But I'm going to select both of the cones in a second and group them. So I select, click on one, either press the multi-select icon or press shift on the keyboard, click on the second one, press Control and G to group them and now the, the two cones are acting as one object. 
And the reason why I'm going to do that is one of my favorite Paint 3D hacks. I'm still in alignment mode at the moment. I'm still making sure these objects all meet up on a central pivot line. But this is one of my favorite Paint 3D hacks to copy. This is where I'm doing at the moment, grouping an object. I scale it inwards and I scale it outwards using the control key to make an, a larger but thinner line. I copy that, I rotate it 90 degrees, I paste that. When you see the UFO next, you'll see it's got these grid lines all the way around the two cones, which gives it more of a feeling of uh, uh, detailing and object complexity, where actually all I've done is I've copied and repasted the same object a couple of times. So I love doing that. I use that, uh, um, it's not a hack, but I use that part of paint a lot to duplicate, to copy, paste and duplicate and rotate. So I press shift when I'm rotating to snap to the increments. So if I have something that's facing me and I rotate it 90 degrees, I know it's facing me on the side. Um, I wish I'd zoomed in on the UFO. I will do a UFO specific tutorial one day. I might even remember to tag it in here as a suggested link. But now I'm making the feet, it's just a cone and a hemisphere. I select both, I copy. Oh no, I select both, I'm just checking the alignment of them now. If you can if you click and drag around multiple objects, it will select just the objects that are within that box, which are quite useful. So that's how I selected both the cone and the hemisphere for the leg. I've copied, I pasted them, I've dragged them over to the right hand side. I rotate them again 90 degrees. And that gives me the four legs of the UFO that are equally spaced. Now again, there are more uh, detailed ways of doing these. There are more complex way of doing all these things. I just wanted to make something in half an hour. So I've rotated the object, I've scaled it, and now I'm moving it in scene. rotated everything 90 degrees so I'm looking from the top down view and now I've moved the UFO so that it is actually sitting on top of the asteroid and at this point this is the only point I do think on a non 15 degree increment I start rotating it so it more closely meets the asteroid underneath it Now I probably had to click on or press control on the keyboard and then rotate, which is what would have stopped it snapping to object beneath it. Snap is great and very useful, but in this case, I didn't want to. And then lastly, I added some stepping stones from the lighthouse to the UFO. And I started with a light gray um, stone color uh, which I'm just using the watercolour brush in a slightly lower opacity. And I decided, you know what, it's sci-fi, it needs some glowing blue. So I did the same thing, possibly lowered the opacity, I can't remember, and drew on top of the stones with a glue, uh, not glue, a blue glow. Lastly, I went to the effects tab and I had a look for a lighting colour for the scene that I thought would most suit the model. Now all I've done there is moved it a little bit closer to the ground because in 3D view that gives you a lovely shadow effect. Or a reflective shadow effect depends on the effect that you've chosen as well not all of them have shadows underneath and finally I'm going to save this as an animation so file save as animation which is one of the options and then you can choose whether it hovers emerges rotates 180 uh, rotates 360 degrees or spins just under 
180 degrees. Now in this case it's space, it's a floating asteroid lighthouse. I like hover the most and I click on save and that saves your video animation of your object to the videos folder on your PC. And there we have it. You just have to rename the file, name the file, and save. Press save and then wait for your file to finish. When you've done that, make sure you save your object again, but save it as a Paint 3D file. If you save it as a 3D object, so go to Menu icon, Save As. If you click on that, it, if you click on Save, it will save as a Paint 3D object. And you want that because that allows you to continue moving and editing the objects that you've made. If you click on File, Save As and 3D Object, that gives you an object that you can import into Word, you can import into PowerPoint, you can import into video editing apps, you can uh, import into videos app in the Photos app. And again, these are fabulous things, fabulous options for you to use. If you bring it to PowerPoint, you can rotate it, you can zoom into it, you can rescale it, you can add animations, you could add transitions from one slide to the next, and it looks brilliant. You can bring it into Word and you can illustrate a book or a story from different angles from the same object. If you go to YouTube and type in Paint 3D Creative Curriculum and look at the English and Languages video, that shows you to how to illustrate the entire Rapunzel story only from one object that you make simply in Paint 3D. And that's important because any subject can be creative. But not only that, but any subject, sorry, this is me talking to teachers again, so that's terrible, assuming that you're a teacher. But there are, in every subject, in every school, there are times when the creative kid is sitting at the back of the class, bored out their skull, and I was that student for an awful long time. So when I was in a maths class, I didn't see the interest in maths. I would sit at the back of the class doodling until the teacher called my name. Whereas if I'd had Paint 3D and I could have made tessellations or made scales or done things in maths in art, I would have been way more interested. Now I've become older, I've seen some of the interest in art in maths, like tessellation and like the Fibonacci spiral and like the golden ratio and so on. So if you can find the creative, the creative moment in science and technology and engineering and arts and maths. Go for that. Have fun with that. Paint 3D allows you to do an awful lot, whether that's making molecules, making lighthouses, making uh, alabrige type animals. I'm going to start putting new videos, new making ofs up here on YouTube. Follow the YouTube to see different making ofs, different tutorials. Um, follow me on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Kerkal, same as all the other social things, K-E-R-C-A-L, and I'm going to be making things live. And if you want to ask me questions live, uh, I am on Twitch on a Sunday, 2 o'clock, Tuesday, 6 o'clock, in the evening, uh, all in the afternoon or evening. I'm not getting up at 2 o'clock in the morning just yet. It's 2 p.m. Sunday. 6 p.m. Tuesday, 8 p.m. Thursday. I'm still in test mode. I'm still trying to see what works and what sticks. But if you want to ask me a question about Paint 3D, through August, those are the times. I might change the times after that. Go on to Twitch TV, go to Kerkal, K-E-R-C-A-L, look at the schedule, see what I'm doing. If you're stuck on Paint 3D, ask me on Instagram, ask me on Twitter, ask me on Twitch. If you ask me on Twitch, you know I'm there. You know, I, and I check the chat room as much as I can. You know I'm there. Ask away, please. I'd love to help people find out more about Paint 3D. It's an application that I uh, really, really like using.